Hey guys, so if I fall asleep when I'm filming this, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm really tired. We've just been sorting out a new venue for CCP, but I wanted to share something with you. I was just reading my Bible uh, and it cast my mind back to something I read in a book. So I'm going to read two things to you. Uh, and I think these confront really uh, modern day Christianity, to be honest, and the uh, lack of depth and lack of true affection uh, for truth that there is. And uh, so I'm going to read this out, see what you think. Uh, this is Psalm 115. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory for the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Why should the nations say, where is their God? Our God is in the heavens. He does all that he pleases. And this reminded me very much of a book I've been reading uh, called The Calvinistic Methodist Fathers of Wales, which is absolutely astonishing book it's absolutely amazing uh, most people or many people today would don't really know what Calvinists are and they have massive caricatures about what Calvinists actually believe it's actually very biblical uh, and uh, probably more people are acquainted with the idea of the Methodist Church uh, well the Calvinistic Methodist Fathers of Wales to be honest were nothing like the Methodist Church today really uh, they were really quite different to that uh, but they were just fierce fierce men who went around sharing uh, what the Bible says about who Jesus is and how all people everywhere need to turn to him and actually Wales was transformed there was a massive move of the Spirit of God in people's hearts uh, and loads of people turned to Jesus so uh, this, this is actually the second volume of two volumes uh, and it's it's just absolutely amazing and then it's just ah. Oh. Anyway, I wanted to read this to you uh, because the picture there uh, in Psalm 115 of uh, actually people going not to us. It's not. It's not about us. It's about your glory. Would you be glorified, God? And then also the sovereignty of God over all things. Like our God is in the heavens. He does all that he pleases. It's very much summed up in this amazing story. So there's a guy called David Codwallader who was one of the Calvinistic Methodist preachers, and he would go around uh, sharing the gospel with people. And he was going from a place called uh, Abu Dhabi, uh, which is kind of like halfway down Wales and going up towards Tawan and then Clanagrin, which is north of Abu Dhabi. Uh, and he was intending to go to Clanagrin itself and preach there. And then uh, basically somebody uh, met him on the way when he was on the way to Clanagrin and, uh, and told him, if you go there, then they're going to kill you. And I've come here to tell you that if you go there, they're going to kill you because they don't want you to preach. Uh, now, Daffid Codwallader struggled greatly with assurance uh, that, that meant that he, he wasn't really sure if he was a Christian sometimes. And he'd find himself going, I don't know, am I am I really a Christian or not? Uh, and <laughs> I'll see if I can, see if I can find it. Uh, basically, uh, uh, Daffy Cogwalder said this. Uh, his, this guy tells him he's going to die. And his words struck deep. My mind kept dwelling on the thought, what if I'm a hypocrite? Then, if they kill me, I will be immediately in hell. I stood there for a while, but having reconsidered, I decided that I was not a hypocrite and that it would be a great privilege to die as a martyr for the name and cause of Jesus Christ. This helped me to proceed confidently. So, uh, and, and he, he goes and he preaches in Clanagrin and, and, and it all actually goes okay. Uh, I mean, other people did get killed. Uh, there's a guy called William Seward, who was the first uh, Calvinistic Methodist uh, martyr. He was hit, I think it was hit by a rock on the head. Uh, so numerous people did die and they got beaten regularly and it's it just, if you read through these two volumes, it is just devastating, uh, the things that they went through. But in that case, it went okay. But the point was, he really struggled with assurance of like whether he was uh, really a Christian or not. And then I just wanted to read some of it to you. Uh, when, when he got quite a lot older, uh, yeah, somebody said to him uh, at one point in his life, they said, if I were you, Daffy Codwallader, I would not be frightened of dying. And Codwallader said, no. If you were me, you you would be frightened of dying. So it seems like there was kind of this lack of being sure. Like, I don't I don't know if I really don't know if I really belong to Jesus. I, I'm not I'm not you know it's, I don't know if it's going to go well for me. Uh, and then right near the end of his life, he was asked, "How are you in your mind?" And the old exhorter replied, "He was an exhorter, which meant a preacher who went around preaching to people." Uh, uh, he replied, "Oh, it is it is perfectly clear." How did you come into the possession of this glorious assurance? The person asked him. Oh, he said, not as I thought I would. I always hoped that I would be given assurance, and the way I hoped to get it was by some sweet, sweet verse such as, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or 
I have loved thee with an everlasting love be being impressed upon my mind. I have been waiting for some such verse to come into my mind with such power that I would be sure of being in a saved state, and I imagine that I would see heaven opened, and an assurance would fill my mind that I would soon be present there. But it has not been like that. I have been taken back in my mind, way back, to infinite eternity, to gaze upon the three persons covenanting together to save sinners. That is the three persons of the Trinity that he's referring to. The three persons covenanting together covenanting together to save sinners and I was then led to see each of them in turn fulfill their part in the great salvation and he goes on and he says I had such a view of these things that it strengthened my soul to rest confidently in the great work I see that there are purposes a thousand times more glorious to be fulfilled by the salvation of a sinner than the happiness of the sinner himself that's amazing I see that there are purposes a thousand times more glorious to be fulfilled by the salvation of a sinner than the happy happiness of the sinner himself. Okay, so like modern day evangelicalism, that that that's not that's kind of not allowed. That's 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 I don't know. That's like hate speech. That's 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 heresy. The, the idea that it's not all about me and all about my happiness. No, there there are purposes a thousand times more glorious than that. It is in this way that the persons of the Godhead fulfill their vows to one another and glorify each other. I cannot therefore fear being lost. So he's, he's talking about God's plan before the creation of the world, whereby it's known as the covenant of redemption. God plans to save sinners. That the father makes a covenant with the son we are going to rescue and now, now most people wouldn't wouldn't allow for that and the thought actually that uh, that a sinner might be swept up in god's purposes uh, when, when that sinner's not actually looking for god but god just decides to love them and draw them to himself and set his affection on them and adopt them as his son or daughter is like that m most people haven't you know don't want to think about that. that that's that 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 kind of offends their own sense of autonomy and yet it's that very thing that seems to have brought amazing comfort to this guy. And it's thoroughly biblical as well. I just want to read the last bit. Uh, this, is, this is when he's on his last legs. It's another account of when he's very, very, very old. Uh, and he says this. I have been meditating today on the Holy Trinity's plan of salvation to save sinners. And I have thought at times that I was in the third heaven. The three persons serving one another to save sinners. And in that service each one glorifying the other. That has been the source of my comfort today. I love that. Isn't this, this, this huge view of God uh, that's, that's not constrained by the weakness of Codwallader himself. It's not, it, it, uh, it, it, who God is isn't dependent upon how he's feeling, but actually he'd been meditating on the, this is this is who I know God to be. This is what I see in the Bible that the Father has has given people to the Son, and they will surely come to Him, and no one can come to Him unless the Father dr draws them to Him. And oh, amazing! And th this is the God who, in Psalm one hundred and fifteen, is in the heavens and who does all that He pleases. And and I'm I'm aware that I'm sharing these things, and some some people are listening, going, "What? I've never heard that before. That that is." different and actually that's that's what happens when when you when you start to uh, get get into the bible and allow it to press on you and do away with some of the really uh, uh unhelpful unbiblical presuppositions that we that people sometimes bring to the bible to kind of disarm it and do away with god's personal autonomy his own freedom his own free will to save whoever he wants so i just wanted to share that with you uh and i, I know for me uh I've known some a little bit of what he's talked about when he said like I've been meditating on this glorious plan of the Trinity like to to dwell upon that to think through that uh, just change changes you it, it absolutely uh, changes how you see the world uh, what what you what you love what you give yourself to how how confident uh, you are in who God is and his ability to save as well so I've I've known something of that but but I wanted to share that with you guys because I absolutely love this story and I love how it how it, it demonstrates something of uh, real living faith in the God of the Bible.